Hello, this is Jared from Monsoon Solutions. Uh, just making a quick video um, to go over checking the calibration and recalibrating the main and the USB channels on the power monitor. Uh, this is something you're going to want to check. Uh, typically once or twice a year is what we recommend. It really depends on your usage. If you're using your power monitor really heavily, I would definitely recommend checking it probably every six months. Um, if you're just kind of using it on occasion, checking it every year is going to be just fine. The calibration will typically hold for quite a while. However, it will fluctuate just due to, you know, thermal loads and components heating up on uh, inside the power monitor itself. It will just drift over time, um, something that's going to happen. And so to do this, you're just going to need a couple of things. Um, number one, you're going to need a couple of static resistors. Uh, I have a 10 ohm and a 200 ohm resistor here. And then I would also highly recommend having a, a multimeter or some, uh, some way to measure the resistance on these resistors. They're never quite exactly what they are advertised on the box. Uh, my 10 ohm is actually 10.1 and my 200 ohm is actually 200.3. And so you're going to want to have these when you're uh, calculating your expected current, uh, current draw from your tests. And the other thing you're going to want to do is power up a command line and we're going to launch power tools slightly differently, uh, slightly different than normal. Um, just go ahead and navigate into the Monsoon Solutions power monitor directory and we're going to fire up powertool.ac with a dash config flag. And what this is going to do is it's going to enable uh, a new button inside the, the GUI which will let us do the calibration. Um, you can see right down here there is a new button called config that is not normally there. That is what is in, what's enabled by that flag. And so the way you're going to check this uh, is set a uh, known voltage. I typically do four volts. It's just a nice easy round number to work with. Excuse me. And we're going to go ahead and start running this. And we'll go ahead and do the course channel first. So I'm hooking up my 10 ohm resistor. And so we can see my measurement here, 385, you know, high 385 milliamps, 386 milliamps, somewhere in there. And so what we're actually going to want to do is bring up a calculator and take our voltage, which, you know, we're fluctuating somewhere between 3.99 and 4 volts. So we'll just go ahead and go with 4 volts divided by 10.1, which is the resistance of my resistor. And so we should be seeing 396.03.04, somewhere in there, milliamps. Um, this value is going to be given to you in amps when you're calculating it this way. So just keep that in mind. And so this power monitor, I've intentionally set the calibration a bit off just for demonstration. Um, and so you, these values on the course channel, you're going to want to be within one milliamp or one percent, whichever is greater. Um, so we're quite a ways, quite a ways out of spec on on this particular channel. And so now I'm going to switch this over to my uh, 200 ohm resistor, which will measure our fine channel. And so you can see we're getting. 21.0, you know, 21.05 ish milliamps. And so we're just going to do the same calculation, four volts divided by our 200.3 ohm resistance. And again, this is in amps, but this is effectively translates to 19.97 milliamps is what we should be seeing. And again, we're off of that. Um, the fine channel should be again within plus or minus 1% or 50 microamps, whichever is, is greater. Um, and so at this current level, it's going to be that 1%. We should be basically within 0.2 milliamps at this point. So we'll go ahead and stop our measurement here. And so now we can go and come into this config. And that's going to bring up our new window here. And as you can see, this gives us some different options in here. Um, the one thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and power this off and then power back on. Um, it will automatically set the voltage correctly, but I typically do that just so it starts out at the correct settings. And so each one of these boxes is going to control a different channel. Um, we have our main uh, fine and coarse, USB fine and coarse, and the auxiliary fine and coarse. And I believe I've already said, um, if not, I'm making another video on the auxiliary channel. It's a little bit different, so I'll cover that later. Um, and quite simply, all you need to do in here is go to the channel that needs calibration and just click AutoCal. This is going to populate this histogram as well as take a bunch of samples at different current levels. Um, and I'm sorry, at different voltage levels 
and it will automatically try to determine the best settings for uh, for that resistance level and you know just try to calibrate that channel as best it can. And what you're looking for is just all green bars on this histogram and you have, basically you want the, the tallest bar somewhere towards the middle and I, I'll typically run this once or twice. You don't necessarily have to, it's just something I, you know, I kind of do out of habit at this point. And so we're just going to go through both channels on main here. And again, we'll just go through this a couple of times. It looked pretty good to me. And you know what, that'll work just fine. Um, the only difference with the USB channel here is you're going to have to uh, modify your resistors a little bit. Um, might be kind of hard to see here, but I just have a standard USB type A cable and I have cut it open and split off the power lines between uh, positive and ground and then attach those to either side of the of the resistor. Nothing too fancy, but it makes calibrating the USB channel a lot easier. And so again, we're going to do the same thing. This is my 10 ohm resistor. So going to my course channel here, I already have this set at 10.1 ohms. You need to uh, fill in this value to whatever the value of your resistor is. So we'll go ahead and hit auto cal again. Whoops, hit manual on accident. Don't worry about the manual button, you don't need to use it. And so again, this histogram is going to look a little weird, but as long as we've got green bars and it has a somewhat, you know, of a centered pattern, it's fine. And we'll go ahead and swap out to my fine channel. And again, just going to run through it a couple of times. And you'll notice that the scale and the offset values will change sometimes. You don't need to adjust these manually. The only time you would is if you're really trying to dial in something at a specific voltage, you can come in and alter the scale and the offset yourself. If you're trying to really get into a really specific uh, measurement range. Uh, once you have this done, click uh, Save Settings to Disk, and that will actually write the settings to the power monitor and save it on there at this point. You can either not worry about it, or if you need a calibration certificate, if it's something you need to have uh, in your lab records, you can actually recalibrate this yourself, and then uh, quick print certificate, and it will uh, allow you to either print the certificate out or just save it as a PDF. Uh, and so at this point, we have completed that. I'm going to come back out. I'm going to go back to four volts. As you can see, we're back at four volts and I'm going to come back out and we're going to go ahead and measure this again. And we'll go ahead and run this. And if you remember, we were looking for 19.97 milliamps on this channel. And so we're right on that target after the calibration and we can go ahead and hook up our course channel. And I want to say we were looking for 196.03. So we are still slightly off on this one. I would say we're, we're within that 1 milliamp or 1%. But if you wanted to get this closer, you can go back in and do the calibration again to try and get this uh, even closer to where you need it. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to email us at uh, pmsupport at msoon.com. And let us know if you have any questions or concerns about the calibration on your device or if you have any other issues, feel free to shoot us an email. Thanks for watching.